This is a video introduction of Chapter 2, History and the Early Childhood Educator. And we're going to start with examining why history is important. This is a slide you can just read the information on. And then we're going to move into the Try It Out activity. So I want you to go to pages 37 to 39 in your textbook and find Table 2.1. Uh, on that page, you're going to find one historical event from early childhood education and brainstorm how this is relevant to the 21st century. How is this important to early childhood education students, families, teachers, or the programs that we are developing and working in? Um, once you have your event selected and you have brainstormed your ideas, you're going to click here and go to our Padlet board. And on Padlet, you're going to share your answer for participation points. Uh, I have a I have a an example on the page that you can see, so just model it after mine. And if you pick an event that you don't know a lot about and the table doesn't seem to help you, a quick Google search of the event should give you a lead to find um, some more answers specific to this event that will help you answer on Padlet. Our next slide talks about solving problems. Um, one of the things we learn from history is history is a way for us to fix what's going on today because most problems in history have repeated themselves. So by learning from history, we can solve challenges that we have as early childhood educators today. But what we find is with every problem we solve, there is a new challenge to overcome. And so these challenges, um, how we overcome them, there are three main um, just tips for facing new challenges and you can read those here. And one of the things that we're finding um, even throughout history to today that children are, are changing in some ways. Uh, so I have a podcast here. Click on the podcast and I'm going to explain each of these um, kind of components of children and how they're changing. If you look at the picture below, this these are children in the 21st century um, and again, they're so different than the children long ago, but they also, we see patterns forming about our children today. So listen to the podcast for more explanation. Then we're going to move into a section on influences, and everything that has a yellow top is um, looking at the influences of early childhood education. So we're going to start with the European influences, and we have four um, researchers or um, advocates for education, and I'd like you to listen to the podcast to learn more about each one of those. Our fourth um, influence is Maria Montessori, and you're going to be learning about the Montessori classroom, and it's actually um, a philosophy you're going to watch for on your observation hours in a few weeks. So if you've never seen a Montessori classroom, click where it says here, and there's a, a quick video of what a day looks like in a Montessori classroom. Some more influences we have are just changes within the United States. And there were four movements going on. They were all happening around the same time. Listen to the podcast and we'll explain how those movements changed the shape of early childhood education. We also had cultural movements going on at the same time. And we've, we were going to look at three diverse groups, the African American policy. Um, population, the Native American population, and the Latino population. This podcast right here will explain the important events, and they are documented here in the boxes. The last big change to early childhood education was the changes in special education law. And so this slide will give you some background into the history of that and why it's important. Next, we're going to take all the information I shared with you and we're going to do a try it out activity. And try it out is where you have to apply what you've learned. So for this, you're going to be using your textbook. Chapter two has um, all of the people that will be, the educational theorists that will be studying. And so you want to have that close by. And we have a list of all the educational theorists that are going to be used in the scavenger hunt. So you might want to keep this to the side when you're ready click on our video right here and it's going to ask you a question, kind of a who am I, and give you some clues using your background knowledge and also the textbook. You're going to jot down the name and you can do this on any piece of scrap paper, just number them. 
and um, at the end you're going to submit your answers um, but you may check them first and the second part of this video right here will allow you to check your answers for this fun little game we'll move away from the, the movements uh, we had in early childhood education just talk specifically about Head Start and this slide will explain that to you and this slide uh, if you read through it these are the components of a quality Head Start program they have the whole child philosophy that handles all these parts of children the educational program uh, gives you some details about the importance of parent involvement and also the National Laboratory Schools for Head Start discussed here. And then I will leave you with the Educational Theorist activity. Now I know some of you started this. It is not due until February 15th, which is next Monday morning, so a week from now. And you want to complete all components of the project, so make sure you watch your uh, project intro video and anything you need to find is in the week two folder on D2L. Along with that project we have a few other assignments for the week and remember this is what you need to do by next Sunday night. So we have first of all a Padlet board for pres presentation participation on slide three. Um, then you're going to participate in the scavenger hunt for slide 10 and Dropbox on uh, week two weekly participation folder and that's where that your answers to that scavenger hunt go. Some other things you need to do outside of the presentation is begin your theorist activity. Um, you were to sign up on Facebook for your theorist so if you haven't done that yet you'll do that and also post your word cloud and I have two different places for you to do those so they're all together and then skim chapter three for next week's presentation. So it's kind of short and sweet this week. If you have any questions after you viewed the presentation, um, the, your book does a nice job of, of elaborating on what I shared, but I can also ask answer them specifically. You can post on Facebook, you can send me a message directly, or you can put it on our um, presentation area of D2L. We have a discussion thread for questions about presentations, so that's a great place to put it as well. Okay, have fun learning this week about history.